This program is brought to you by friends and partners of Shaiju Matthew and Revive Nations. So in life, how do you be stable? In life, how do you receive a blessing? You have to have a fixed heart. I have desires here, I have attractions there, I have temptations there, but it doesn't matter. My heart is fixed. I know that this is the only thing that is stable and that is the presence of God. It is not because the temptations are not calling me. It is not because distractions are not everywhere, but my heart is fixed because I'm done playing games. You have to make up your mind, is that my heart is fixed. If my heart is fixed, I will not be tossed by the waves. If my heart is fixed, I will not be tossed around by the waves of life. Now, it does not mean that the waves of life will not come, but I will not be tossed around. The wicked will not have victory over you. They'll come against you. They will fight you. They'll try to do things, but they will not have victory over you. Provided your heart is fixed. Have a little one that you desire to see grow in the things of God? Subscribe to Revive Nations Kids on YouTube for an exciting array of programs every week. RevivedNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. I want to introduce you to a practical Christianity that will show you that you can have victory over every area in Jesus' name. Okay. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I want you to, I want you to say that, oh God, oh God. my heart is fixed. We are back in Psalms 108 because when your heart is fixed, you will do something. You will begin to sing and give praise. Sing and give praise, even with my glory. Ah, I like that. That means Jesus said, the glory that you have given me, I give to them. There's a, there's a, there's a whole concept of don't touch God's glory. Ah, no, 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 I'm not touching God's glory. He's giving it to me. I am part of it. You see what I'm saying? I am part of it. I am the glory of the Lord. I am the extension of his arm. I am his light on earth. Jesus said, you are the light. Ah, you are the light of this world. That's the promise of Jesus. That means that you are his glory on earth. The way people are going to see him is by seeing you. When they see you functioning like a mountain that does not be moved, then they see the glory of the Lord. When they see that the wicked has not overcome you, then they see the glory of God. Eish, you think they're going to come and see God directly? No, 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 no. They see your life and they see how you are not moved and how you are surrounded by the presence of God. How you have victory that the rod of wicked is not in the lot of the righteous. Ah, then they begin to testify. Wow, we see the glory of your God. It's time for victories in your life in Jesus' name. Ah, I said it's time for victories in your life in Jesus' name. So, the reason why you cannot sing and give praise properly okay is because your heart is not fixed the reason why we cannot break out in praise is there's parts of our heart that is still not become one 
with our lord when that oneness happen one of the first things that happen in the, the life of a jesus lover or life of king david there is a process that happens there is a transition that happens when he gets to know the lord better there is something that happens the grace of god will cause him to have so much gratitude that he is not been moved and he is surrounded by the presence of god that the wicked has not had victory because he has put his trust in the lord now that trust begins to overflow out of the trust he begins to sing out of the trust he begins to praise that's why it says i will sing and praise you see singing is i will celebrate sing unto the lord it doesn't require a lot of muscles but praise is not the same as sing praise the hebrew language is halal praise that's the kind of praise that requires you to clap hands that's the kind of praise that requires you to move so he's saying i'm not just going to worship the lord quietly because there's sometimes you say you know as long as i can just meditate in in my heart meditation is very different from praise one is internal the other is external that's the part when you complete your understanding of who god is you're saying i will lay my crown down and i physically will kneel down before him in fact the apostles and the prophets in heaven they fall face forward that is praise when every part of your body is involved it's not just vocal cords every part of your body is now partaking in that worship that is a zone where now wicked cannot have victory over your life that is a zone where the presence of god surrounds you that is a zone where you shall not be removed look in order for you to be a believer that cannot be removed in order for you to be a believer that is a heavy weight christian that's what it is in order for you to not be removed you need to be like a mountain in order for you to be a mountain you need to be a heavy weight in the spirit realm in the spirit realm that means there is parts of work that needs to be done in your heart to get to that point okay so when i say oh god my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed i don't want it to i don't want to to simplify it too much and give you vague information i want to give you practical keys three things number 1 a fixed heart requires a rooted trust in the lord if you are writing it down number 1 a fixed heart requires a rooted trust in the lord an explicit trust in the lord a meticulous trust in the lord a radical trust in the lord a crazy trust in the lord a senseless trust in the lord a mad trust in the lord in order for you to be fixed your heart to be fixed you have to work on your trust level meaning god i'm not good but you're good god i have not been faithful but you have been faithful god is not because of what i did but because of how good you are i'm going to be blessed that ridiculous trust ish that ridiculous trust you need to develop that ridiculous trust satan hates what i'm teaching you Satan didn't want you to listen to what I'm saying but in the next season if you can develop ridiculous trust in God you're going to watch him suddenly manifest in your life like he's never manifested and you're going to be like wow I heard this all this while yep it was yours all the while but it can only be activated when ridiculous trust is activated it's the kind of trust where they're threatening to throw you in the lion's den and you're like okay really What well, what time will you be throwing me in the lion's den? Like will I have time to have some breakfast or Because I have to I'm assuming it's going to be a few days before you come to check on me. 
so i it'll be nice if i can have some breakfast or some heavy lunch or brunch or something like that so i can stay longer in the lines then until you change your mind ridiculous trust welcome to ridiculous trust where people are like oh we're going to throw you in the fire oh how 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 hot do you think it'll be <laughs> it's going to be like blue hot or what color will the fire be is will we have like a chair or something inside where we can sit down <laughs> while you wait to change your mind to ask us to come out of the fire can we have like a lounge area or something <laughs> ridiculous i introduce ridiculous trust into your spirit Amen. the doctor is saying that ja, 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 and you're like ja, ja, ja. you guys don't know anything you guys don't know anything because my god is still a prayer and sing god Amen. we serve a god of elijah Amen. he's still releasing fire Oh yes 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 yes. So fixed heart requires ridiculous trust. Can you have a ridiculous trust in your spirit? Look at your neighbor and say it requires a ridiculous trust. Can you help me preach to your neighbor? Number 2. It requires you to have a rooted identity in Christ. You know this is another issue that I've seen in the kingdom. Satan can hassle you in not realizing who you are in Christ. So you never find victory. You are always lacking somewhere or the other. You have to develop secure heart in your relationship with God and in your relationship with people. so secure identity vertically secure identity horizontally you need both because you are living in a place that's filled with people unless you're living on an island where there's no people you don't need to bother about developing identity with human beings but otherwise you have to develop who you are in Christ and who you are with people because if you only develop one part so you're like I am loved by Jesus I have Jesus I don't care about anybody else my dear <laughs> you are living with people you can't say that you have to develop that part of you in order for you to have a fixed start because I'll tell you something people can mess up your relationship with God some of you have experienced that because of the bad experience you had in your church your your understanding about god was tainted because of the bad relationship you had with the leadership you thought god was like that everything got messed up your perspective about god now you look through the lens of the church people the problem with saul was he was a huge people pleaser because all his life he was very insecure in fact when they said you're going to be the king the bible says he hid among the baggages in fact he was the tallest in israel so that means he was like a foot taller than everybody and the guy managed to hide among the suitcase that's a very clever hide i think he was a uh, he was the first prize in hide and seek growing up how do you hide among baggages I mean the guy must have crawled. So imagine a guy who is 1 foot taller than everybody else still his inner self was so underdeveloped that when the time for promotion and elevation came he was found hiding among the baggages. That part of him is the part that got him killed. Because although he was promoted as a king he never came out of that insecurity. he was always insecure about himself so what happens he commits a sin he doesn't care about getting right with the lord because he's so insecure that people will find that god is not with him and reject him so he's telling the prophet come on cover up my sin so that my insecurity my ego my insecurity is covered and then you see little david coming on the scene a demon enters saul and now he begins to persecute the anointed david why insecurity insecurity with people can take you away from your fixed heart 
insecurity of not knowing who you are so you walk into a room you're like oh i'm a nobody okay okay if you're a nobody why should god use you because god is in the business of picking up nobodies and setting them up on the rock now your identity is that you're part of a rock you're not a nobody walk in into the room as a somebody is somebody learning what i'm saying in order for you to have a fixed heart you have to develop that part of you some people anywhere they go they think everybody is attacking them everybody is against them hey she looked at me cross eyed ah uh, may the lord get you out of that season in jesus name sometimes what we project on other people is not really other people is our fears oh you 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 always upset with me like sick we, we were enough upset no 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 everybody is doing this no 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 not everybody is doing this you are projecting on everybody what you are feeling inside of you if you don't develop that side of you you can never have a fixed heart and satan will toss you around practical christianity we're not just talking about going to heaven now we need to have victory on earth number 3 rooted in your thirst number 1 rooted in your trust number 2 rooted in your identity number 3 rooted in your thirst what you eat is what you are what you eat is what you are you are your cravings your cravings your cravings The Bible talks about how Israelites they had a strong craving in the desert. They had a strong craving for meat. It was that meat that killed thousands of them. The anger of God burned for them. He said, "You guys are complaining and grumbling after all what the blessings have that you've not been able to control your thirst." Oh your thirst was in the wrong place your cravings was not controlled you're still complaining you're still grumbling you cannot thank the lord for a goodness so now the bible says god was so upset he said okay you want meat here's meat fed them so much meat that the bible says they jumped out of the nostrils so that means there was a right way of getting the meat and there was a wrong way of getting the meat There's a right way of getting a blessing and there's a wrong way of getting a blessing. The wrong way is God, you never do this God, you know God, you know maybe if God has never done this because you never did it the right way. Christians, I find that we have a problem with locating our faults. But we are very good at faulting God. That's the goodness of of Job. The Bible says in all this he never blamed God. He never blamed God. He said, "No, no, no. If I'm in a mess it's because of me. I can never blame God. I may even blame the church, but I can't blame God." Talk to me. Are you following me? That the stable heart, the fixed heart is able to locate what they eat and they don't allow their cravings to overtake them. they don't allow their sexual thirst to control them they are careful of what they eat they don't eat everything they eat what is given from the lord a child of god their life is all about what they eat what manna do you eat what teachings to you eat part of you being fixed in god is that you locate what is going to reduce your walk with god you locate what thirst 
am i entertaining in my life right now what friendships am i entertaining in my life right now what kind of movies that i'm watching what kind of series that i am addicted to that is causing me to be addicted to it and thereby i'm not drinking the one that is more healthy jesus said if you come to me you will never thirst again so there is a a better healthy drink that you're supposed to drink but you have all these fizzy drinks attracting your attention so you as long as you have those things you never have this and as long as you don't have this your heart will not be fixed as long as your heart is not fixed you will be a mountain that is removed and you will not have the presence of god you will not have victory over your enemies it is all connected what apps need to get out of your life what contacts need to get out of your what is stealing your thirst making you a weak believer what kind of cravings i'm telling you one of the things that believers get killed for by god is a spirit of grumbling i was praying for somebody i was, I was like god please bless them please bless them and the lord showed me i can't bless them because even if you release a grace on their life within 30 minutes after the service they've had a fight husband and wife before you know all the grace that you've released has been leaked because of a grumbling spirit na 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 that's not nice this is not nice so everything god has done has leaked because of a craving that cannot be satisfied a false craving yeah, 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 but 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 pastor you don't know he, my husband irritates me he keeps throwing the socks in that place okay fine you're right your husband should have some more order you're right but your your husband throwing the socks wherever he threw didn't cause demons to come into this house okay but you dishonoring your husband caused demons to enter into the house are you following what i'm saying we can blame each other to the point where now the enemy has fun he enters into the house now he is now attacking our children and and years now you can pray and pray and pray god pray pray no stop i i think i think christians stop praying for a minute stop praying for a while let's fix your mess first then you don't even need to pray you can just look up and say god before you finish your prayer the prayer is answered isn't that what it says in john chapter 15 it says whatsoever you ask you shall receive if you abide in me and i in you you got to change you got to change we got to change we will change Amen. talk to me we will change Amen. heavenly father lord i have taught your children from your holy scriptures so heavenly father right now i'm asking you for your spirit to locate your children wherever they are anyone that is listening to this word and they truly desire that they must function in this level of excellence oh yes lord i'm asking you right now that the spirit of the lord will grant them that grace you will have a fixed heart and because your heart is steady and you have a ridiculous trust in the lord you will begin to see how every part of your life is covered by the lord and you will be the mountain that cannot be removed In the name of Jesus I command every area in your life where the rod of the wicked is over your lot the rod of wicked represents authority 
Sometimes certain wicked people have more authority over your life. In the name of Jesus, I'm reversing it right now. The rod of the wicked shall not be on your lot. That also may require that sometimes you start your own business so that you don't have a wicked rod above you. In the name of Jesus, Father, anyone that is coming in agreement with this prayer right now, let them receive that grace. People of God, there's grace flowing through me. I can feel it in my bones. Right now, I speak grace in your finances in Jesus' name. I speak great wealth in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for every seed that they have sown into this ministry today. Every offering, every tithe, anything that is given to in your name. Today I speak the shalom of God. Let it begin to multiply. Let it begin to bear much fruit. I thank you for sending me for your children today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, welcome back. We are so grateful to the Lord for such a powerful word. You know, the Bible says how all things will fade away, but His word will remain. And when you have the word in your heart, you will be able to withstand any fire or storm that comes your way. And I'm praying that you will come back with a mighty testimony. You are very much loved. If you're blessed by this ministry, would you take a minute and partner with us and help us to take this word to the nations? Please visit revivenations.org slash give. Also take a minute to connect with us on our social media platforms and we would love to hear from you. Until next time, God bless you and Shalom. Many of us love Jesus by our words, Facebook posts and scripture quotes. But when God wanted to show us how much He loved us, He gave up His only begotten Son. He is not looking for part-time Christians, nor a portion of surrender or a fraction of obedience. He is waiting for us to empty ourselves. He is not asking us for some things. He is asking us for everything. And Jesus is the only person who has the right to ask us for everything because He gave us everything. Distance is not a barrier to God. RevivedNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. 